So your, one of my favorite books, The Famished Road, is about Azaro, a spirit child, and a, and a bhikkhu who's still attached to the spirit realm. This film here, Yaleen, is also about a spirit boy. So could you tell us about the first time you came across this film and what your response was? Well, I think like a few people in the audience. Um, I saw Yaleen when it first, first came out, about 1987, 1988. And I think I saw it here. Mm, if, yeah. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was here that we, we, we saw it. And I remember at the time, because I've only seen it once, mm. um, but it's the, it's the kind of film that you see once and it inscribes itself on you. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember being genuinely stunned and enchanted at the idea of this film that was so visually beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and that dealt with a subject that was very, very dear to, to, to many of us writers and thinkers and artists in Africa, which is how to, sp how to speak about the authentic African way in a way that speaks to all the levels of being human. Um, and to do it in a story that has dignity, tragedy, richness, magic, um, and that's what this film did. Mm. Um, it's, it's a, it's a poetic, ex poetic exploration of royalty, destiny, class, femininity, magic, imagination, power, those classic, classic ancient themes of father and son and the redemptive um, role of, of the feminine. It's a film uh, about mythology. It's profoundly a film about the influence of mythology mm. on, on everyday life. Mm. So it's, it's, it's about, um, I don't know if anybody here read when they were kids, uh, uh, a little book called uh, The African Child by Kamara Lai. Mm. Um, that, that, that book, it, it touches a, a subject that is, you don't get very often in, 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 in modern novels, which is initiation into uh, uh, a special secret sect of workers, people who work with the magic and with gold and with the, so it has to be secret and it's about initiation this film is about initiation mm. Mm. we don't we're not we, we don't do many films about initiation um and that's because we've lost a sense of mystery mm. um and where, and where the sense of mystery is lost there's no need for initiation because everything is is perceived to be open and transparent and not needing a special gnosis right um so this is a film about Protecting power. Yes. Um, and it uses this age old thing that fascinated the Greeks and fascinates the Africans and, and the Indians, which is that the, the, the argument do you keep it? Do you, do you share it? Mm -hmm. um, what do you do with it? It's, mm. it's a subject that we've talked about in relation to Black Panther. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a film about, this is a film about power mm. um, mm. Um, and about so many things. It's, it's a, Mm. An, an extraordinary ritual experience. Mm. How many people have seen Yulene? Like, like, like Ben, maybe 25. And how many have seen it recently? Oh, lucky you. Good. The one person who's on it. So, for the lot who's novice. So, so, I just want to read a quote yes. that I think you said. So Tommy, if you didn't say it, happy to be. Uh, uh, challenged on this one, but you, I think you said, I grew up in a tradition where there are simply more dimensions to reality. Legends and myths and ancestors and spirits and death, which brings the question, what is reality? For different perceptions of reality, we need a different language. And I think in your own work, that's what you've been exploring, I think, is the way to give voice uh, to these different, this different reality. And I think in Yaleen and in lots of West African films, especially at this time, it's, it's similar. So 
is there a way, could you describe what that language, what that language is or what, what the conditions of that language is, especially for those who haven't seen the film? What, what, what are they in for? Um, it's, a, it's, a language of, it's, a, it's a language that is very difficult to work with in narrative. Mm. And it's a language of symbolism. Mm. It's almost the language of the unconscious. Mm. So the story that you're going to witness, that you're going to be part of, is a dual story. It's a, an overground story and an underground story. Um, it's, when, when I say we need a new language to talk about these different realities, we need a new language to talk about these different realities as one. Because mm. yeah. um, to talk about each of these realities on, on its level, we can do that. But to talk about all the levels at the same time mm -hmm. in one arc, mm -hmm. you need a new kind of purification of language. Mm -hmm. And only the language of symbolism, the language of dreams, the language of rituals, the language of initiation, a secret language, a language that gives you pinpricks, that gives you goosebumps, a language that you can't quite put your finger on. It's, uh, he, does it, he does it visually and with music, Salif, Salif Keita. It's the first time I encountered Salif Keita's music in this visual, in this visual context. Um, and we are fascinated by it in West Africa because of the frustration that we have between the reality that we know, which is multidimensional, multivalent, and the reality that we are given um, as a way of describing the world, which is transparent and uniform and unilateral and lateral and singular. Um, so, so it's, it is finding a, a new kind of mathematics for the poetics of the spirit. Mm. There's no other way, to, there's no other way to, 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 to put it. So screen epiphanies, the whole concept of screen epiphanies is this is a film that you have chosen yes. that gave you an epiphany moment, but you had others uh, in, your, in your lineup as well. So what, what, what made you choose this and, and what role does cinema play in your life? How does it? Oh, cinema. Cinema is, for me, definitely one of the revelations of contemporary life and one of the revelations of, of culture. Uh, um, um, for me, cinema is not just the language of the visual. It's also the language of dreams. It's a language of um, closed, uh, a closed space in which the outside world is dissolved into, into, a, into a new territory. Um, I, I, think, I think of my first experience of cinema in the West, the experience of cinema is indoors. So you go into a space like this. Doors are shut. It goes dark. The screen is the only place where the light's coming from. My, ex my first experience of cinema in Nigeria was open space. People come with these, with these, film, with these, f this little group of film people. They bring their film players and their screens. They set it up, and you watch it right under the skies. Mm. Um, as, as the long evening settles into night. Um, and many of my favorite cinemas, the places where I saw those Indian movies and Chinese movies and early African movies when I was a teenager, were open air, you look up and you saw the stars. Um, and so, so for me, cinema is not about close, it's not about a closed space. It's about a space that opens possibly into a kind of infinity, your own infinity, uh, the infinity of your your inward truths. Um, I, I find the language of cinema fascinating because, mm. because, because of its parallel with the language of dreams. Mm. Um, they have a lot in common, the way in which the, the eye closes in sleep and the eyelids, the inward eyelid, is, becomes a screen of that constant territory of dreams that Bunuel talks about. Um, the, the, the relationship between light and the inward retina. Um, so <laughs> I, had a, I had quite a few uh, yeah, what, what, possible. Do, do you remember the ones that you yeah, that I didn't do. make the cut? Yeah, well, I do remember. I mean, Kurosawa was definitely going to be there. Um, I had a strong soft spot for Wings of Desire. Um, um, of course, um, I was going to, you know, Black Girl was going to be. Uh, an, an important one to choose from. There are, you know, many. I even toyed with the Godfather trilogy. Mm. Um, poetic films um, of all of all descriptions. But finally, I I wanted to champion a film that I felt needed more than anything. Um, protection. Mm. 
because I heard about Yelin that the, 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 the film itself is still is quite fragile. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and um, it has not been looked after properly. Yeah. And I really wanted to use this as an occasion to say this is a film that eminently deserves your focus of conservation. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm not, the only, I'm not the only one who believes that this is one of the 50 most important films in world, world cinema. Mm -hmm. um, and it, this is a plea to you personally. Mm. <laughs> I'm kind of, yeah, yes. to, 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 to help with its conservation and also to help with the conservation of the important African films yeah. that are being made, films of people like Ola Balogun that are being made and they just sort of kind of wither away and yeah. just slowly turn to dust. There's, I mean, there's, lack it's, of love. it's a huge um, uh, cultural, moral issue actually about what we choose to preserve and conserve. Who holds the right? I mean, this is kind of gnarly, but it's really interesting about the concept of rights yes. and right in terms of who holds the right, who owns a film. Right. Um, so you can't conserve anything that you don't own, own the rights to. Is that what you're there's saying? There's all those kind of issues around it, but I think they're, they're morally interesting ones mm. around what is even our concept of, of rights. Um, but there's, there's, some there's some interesting projects. Martin Scorsese has launched this massive project at the moment, which is about conserving specifically African films. Yes. So they've just done Soleo Med Hondo, and they, I think each year they're doing another film, another couple Good. of titles. Well, they should add this to it. I'm going to let them know. Yeah. I give them a call. Send them, send them, but send it's them a, a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good point. And there are people in the audience, I won't call them out, who have more direct contact than I, but for sure, in terms of um, what, do we, what do we see as value and what is valued in cinema. So it's, it's really exciting that we... Uh, the, and the great thing was, and we can, we can, I'm just, I don't know if Justin's here, but we can, we laughed about it when uh, Ben sent his list through, <laughs> and Justin was like, all of these are easy to get, Wings of Desire, this and that, but Yileen's really hard to get, and Ben was like, that's the one I want. <laughs> and we were like, but yeah, that, that is, it's hard, yeah. they're hard to yeah. get, imagine yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, um, my last question before we show the film is, it's a really simple one, which is, um, so this film won the jury prize in Cannes in 1987. And there was a moment, I think a particular moment for African cinema where that language that you speak of, yeah. that, that uh, poetic dreamlike language somehow transcended beyond the cultural borders of countries like Mali where the film was made and reached this international audience. It captured something. And your work has done the same. Your work has managed to, to um, transcend Nigeria where it was created and, and, and and to all of our dream consciousness. What do you think is a secret to that? How, why do you think a film like Yaleen did capture international audiences' um, attention? I think, it's, I think it's truth to place. Um, there are two ideas of universality in art. And uh, people think they're mutually incompatible. I don't, I don't think so at all. One is um, you tell truth about place. Place, time, character, being, but place. You're true to that place. You go deeply into that truth, and the depth of that truth will touch all of us. So it's universality through truth to place and depth of, of, of touch and depth of intuition. And the other is truth to the universal in, in all of us. Mm. Um, and there are artists that do both. Um, that I think there are different ways to reach the, 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 the depths of the human spirit. For me, I, 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 I have this intuition that the deeper you go into one thing, the deeper you go into all of us. Mm. Um, mm. But there's an art in that, because I know many novels and many films that are really great about one place and one thing, but they don't touch you, they exclude you, because they... They have this curiously nationalistic idea behind the film, um, driving it. So I'm not talking about nationalism. I'm not talking about tribalism. I'm talking about place in its most um, immanent um, and metaphysical sense. Place in, in the way in which in the ways in which the dust of a certain land dreams. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. Um, I think there's a kind of a contour to um, stories that weave between the dreams of people and the realities of people. There's a kind of, there's a kind of contour that we all feel. Mm. Um, and it's that, it's that, it's that archaeology mm. that really interests me. I knew you were the right person for me to invite. This has been fascinating. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much. It's been lovely talking to you. Fantastic. Hey, I hope you have a really great time with this film, yeah, by the way. Yeah, you're really interesting. Surrender you yourself to it. Sure.